Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. You know, the one thing that this um, going away party for Trina showed me was just, was just how bloated this cast is. Um, you know, I'm surprised that Trina wasn't initially more upset with what Spencer did as far as giving Ace to um, Nicholas. And I'm glad that Jocelyn did call him out on that because, you know, you sit there and talk about how Nicholas was a bad father, this, that, and third, but yet you handed your brother over to the same bad father that you constantly call a bastard, pretty much. Um, Spencer does tell both of them that, you know, Esme got her memories back. Most likely she got her memories back, but we can't prove it, you know? And Jocelyn's like, don't worry about it. Just go to Paris. I got you. Um, so that should be pretty interesting. Portia and Ava definitely came a long way. You know, Portia was initially nasty with Ava just for having a relationship with Trina. So they, they definitely came a long way. Curtis is still worried. Here's the thing about Curtis, and I understood this to some extent. You know, Marshall is just like, you know, what's going on with you? And Curtis is like, I don't want to sit there and have hope that I'm going to be able to walk. And then if I'm not able to walk, then I'm going to have to sit there and face reality. And that's just going to, well, for lack of better words, suck. Um, now, here's the thing about Portia and how she feels about Spencer. It has been annoying for quite a while, right? And in this episode... You know, she's just, like, she basically says that she doesn't like Spencer because she doesn't like the danger that follows him. And usually I've been pretty annoyed with how, well, shitty she's been treating Spencer. But in this episode, you can clearly see that, Sp that Esme is going to go after Trina and Spencer because, you know, Spencer brung Esme into their world, into their lives. You know, she brought he brought problems by bringing her with him. So, in a sense, I understand what she's saying, but it's like at the end of the day, that's your daughter. That's a choice. You don't have to like it, but you gotta sit and respect it and stop being so nasty and combative towards her. Um, you know, at first I was surprised that Heather told Laura that Esme had her memories back. But the reason why she did that, because I was like, wait, why would you, why would you do that? But she wants Esme in jail. She wants Esme in jail so this way she can keep an eye on that because she already feels that, you know, Esme is out for revenge. And it's probably going to end badly. You know, her first two targets, she said, was most likely Trina and Spencer. So she was like, you know, listen, if you tell, you're going to have to sit there and tell. And in this way, I can just keep an eye on you. Meanwhile, you got Kevin. And here's something that was interesting, in a sense, and way overdue. Was the one-on-one -on -one conversation with Kevin and Esme. You know, Asme was about to pretty much take the company card, you know, the, the company credit card to try to book a flight to where she thinks that a, um, Ace may be at. And, you know, uh, Kevin had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with her about trying to change, and, you know, we're here for you, just that and third. And towards the end, she picks up some sort of heavy object and just winds up knocking Kevin out. Like, you know, you're going to get in the way of my plans. So whatever, his thing, whatever she's going to do, She's going to do it very soon because, you know, she already knocked him out. When he wakes up, he's going to be like, yo, this chick is dangerous. We got to sit and keep an eye on her. So whatever that Esme is going to be doing to Trina and Spencer and hell, even Jocelyn is going to happen soon. And I mean, like in the next couple of days, Molly was being all sorts of extra with Christina. You know, first she came over with a bunch of healthy food practically trying to shove it down her throat. 
Then she's constantly sitting there asking her about, oh, you know, you're going to sit there and take the pregnancy test. You sit there and take it. Yada, yada, yada. Spoiler alert. She's pregnant. She does get a text from, I could have swore she got a text from Blaze, but she says that she got it from some guy at work at the bar. Um, just friends or whatever. So I, I, I think if it was Blaze, then why did she not just sit there and tell her that? I don't know. I, I was kind of just like, I was so, it was like, I really, I, I've been off and on as far as caring about this whole surrogacy storyline. And I don't know. I just was not like really that interested in it. Spinelli is hell of annoying. Not going to lie. He got all up in Cody's face because Cody bought James some riding boots. And he starts accusing him of having feelings for Maxie and everything. Which, in all reality, you know, Cody just um, called him out on his jealousy. You know? Which is... It's true. Obviously, Spinelli has feelings for Maxie. And I know for a very long time, they wanted those two to get back together. So, it's, it's not out the blue that he's, you know, developing these feelings and stuff like that. I know he's there to sit there and try to give um, Maxie financial support, but it's... You know, it's obviously a little bit more, and the fans have been wanting this for a while. And while I'm not really all hokey on the whole lovey-dovey stuff, it does give Maxi some more story, and I'm here for that. And speaking of Maxi and James, um, which is very interesting, is that here's the thing about kids. They're a lot more smarter and more observant than people give them credit for. And so when James is sitting there talking to Maxie about, you know, I know that you probably have money troubles and stuff like that. I do hear I have ears and stuff like that. Um, you know, somewhat alarming and somewhat concerning to Maxie. And it, it kind of makes her a little sad because, you know, she's already having this stress. And now she knows that her kids, you know, is knowing about her financial situation, which is definitely not making her, you know, at ease. But hell, even Felicia tells Spinelli to back off a little bit, you know, like, hey, listen, I had some doubts about him, but, you know, he's cool people and, you know, just, like, chill out a little bit. And don't get me wrong, I understand, I initially understand Spinelli's dislike for him. I mean, hell, when he came in town, the first thing he wanted to do him pretty much was blackmail Spinelli, but that was, dude, that was like a year ago, if, if not more. And you still holding on to that grudge? Like, bro, relax. But yeah, usually I've been on Spencer's side for the most part when it came towards Porsche because she was really nasty and very combative towards him. Um, but like I said, in this case, knowing that Esme is actually coming after Trina because of Spencer, in a sense... You know, he's the one that brung her into their lives and the uh, revenge tape and everything like that. So I can understand her concerns. Marshall and um, Stella was there. They didn't really do much. They just grilled, they just grilled um, Spencer for a little bit for some odd reason because I don't really know why. Curtis is not there talking about his worries that he may, he may not be able to walk again, and he doesn't want to sit there and get his hopes up. Which we all know that he's going to probably walk again. I don't remember one character, except for Lila Ray, that was actually in a wheelchair for the majority of the show. I can't. I literally cannot think of anyone else. So we know that Curtis is going to want to walk again. It's just pretty much a matter of time. I feel like that's about it. I wound up doing this video like three times, so I know I probably wound up leaving out some stuff here and there. So when I read the comments and people are saying, you didn't talk about this, you didn't talk about that, it's probably because I wound up talking about it maybe the other three takes. But I feel like I kind of got a grasp on everything. All in all, this episode was better than yesterday's episode, so I give him that much. Tomorrow's episode looked like it's going to be a little bit better. But we'll see. I mean, they do got Finn and Liz there, so it's yeah, you know, it's kind of up in the air about that. Um, <laughs> but if I missed anything, you know what to do. Come to the live stream tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. 
anything that I didn't sit there and talk about this review, I probably want to be and talk about in the live stream, along with Days of Our Lives, Bo and the Beautiful, and Young and the Restless. With that being said, I'm going to go. I'll see you in the next video.